हरे कृष्णा वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल वी आर बैक विद एलिवेशन टू कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस चैप्टर वन चूजिंग ह्यूमन एंड एनिमल लाइफ बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रील प्रभुपाद ऑल ग्लोरीज टू श्रील प्रभुपाद ओम अज्ञानतिरांध से ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम I offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master who has opened my eyes blinded by the darkness of ignorance with the torch light of knowledge It is customary with this verse to offer obeisances to the spiritual master who enlightens his disciple in the matter of transcendental knowledge The Vedic process does not involve research work in mundane scholarship we have to show our academic learning by some research but the Vedic process is different In the Vedic process the research work is already done it is complete and it is simply handed down by disciplic succession from teacher to student there is no question of research work because the instruments and the means with which one conducts such research work are blunt and imperfect at this stage of our material existence we are conditioned by many laws of nature all conditioned souls are subjected to four defects due to the imperfection of their senses One defect is that the conditioned soul is certain to commit mistakes there is no man who does not commit mistakes in india for instance mahatma gandhi was supposed to be a very great personality but he also committed mistakes 5 minutes before he came to the meeting at which he was killed he was warned by confidential associates not to go but he persisted to commit mistake is very natural in the conditioned state of life indeed the popular saying has arisen to err is human another imperfection of the conditioned soul is that he is sure to be illusioned being illusioned means accepting something which is not taking some phantasmagoria to be factual every one of us is under the impression that we are these bodies but actually we are not accepting the body to be the self is called illusion or maya the third imperfection is that conditioned souls have a tendency to cheat we have often heard a store keeper say because you are my friend i won't make any profit of you but in actuality we know that he is making at least 50% profit there are so many instances of this cheating propensity there are also many examples of teachers who actually know nothing but put forth theories in words like perhaps or it may be while in actuality they are simply cheating their students the fourth imperfection is that the senses of the living entity are not perfect our vision is so limited that we cannot see very far away nor very near the eye can see only under certain conditions and therefore it is understood that our vision is limited similarly all our other senses are also limited it is not possible to understand the unlimited by this imperfect limited senses the conclusion is that the vedic process does not encourage us to endeavor to learn the absolute truth by employing our present senses which are conditioned in so many ways if we are to have knowledge it must come from a superior source which is not conditioned by these four imperfections that source is krishna he is the supreme authority of bhagavad gita and he is accepted as the perfect authority by so many saints and sages those who are serious students of vedic literature accept authority bhagavad gita for example is not a scholarly presentation which arose out of so much research work it is a perfect knowledge that was taught by lord krishna to arjun on the battlefield of kurukshetra and we receive information from it that in previous ages shri krishna also taught it to the sun god vivaswan and it was handed down from time immemorial from vivaswan by disciplic succession imam vivasvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vivaswan manave praha manur ikshvak ve bravit the blessed lord said i instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god vivaswan and vivaswan instructed it to manu the father of mankind and manu in turn instructed it to ikshvaku bhagavad gita 4th chapter verse number 1 
इफ वी स्टडी भगवद गीता अकॉर्डिंग टू एकेडमिक नॉलेज और अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर ओन मेंटल स्पेक्यूलेशन वी आर सर्टन टू कमिट मिस्टेक्स इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल टू अंडरस्टैंड भगवद गीता इन दिस वे इट इज नेसेसरी टू फॉलो केयरफुली इन द फुट स्टेप्स ऑफ अर्जुन इन प्रीवियस एजेस ड्यू टू इंटरप्रिटेशन एंड मेंटल स्पेक्यूलेशन द रियल पर्पट ऑफ भगवद गीता वॉज लॉस्ट देर फोर कृष्ण री एस्टैब्लिश द टीचिंग्स बाय गिविंग देम टू अर्जुन एवं परंपरा प्राप्त इमं राजर्षयो विदु सकाले नेह महता योगो नष्ट पर मैया तेद्या योग प्रोक्त पुरातन भक्त मे सखा चेती रहस्यम ह्येतद उत्तमम द सुप्रीम सायन्स वॉज दस रिसीव्ड थ्रू द चेन ऑफ डिसाइप्लिक सक्सेशन एंड द सेंटली किंग्स अंडरस्टूड इट इन दैट वे बट इन कोर्स ऑफ टाइम द सक्सेशन वॉज ब्रोकन एंड देर फोर द सायन्स एज इट इज अपियर्स टू बी लॉस्ट दैट वेरी एंशंट सायन्स ऑफ द रिलेशनशिप विथ द सुप्रीम इज टूडे टोल्ड बाय मी टू यू बिकॉज यू आर माय डिवोटी एज वेल एज माय फ्रेंड देर फोर यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द ट्रांसेंडेंटल मिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस सायन्स भगवद गीता फोर्थ चैप्टर वर्स नंबर सेकेंड एंड थर्ड Thus, whoever follows in the footsteps of Arjuna, approaching Krishna in a spirit of devotion, can understand the purpose of Bhagavad Gita as well as all other Vedic literatures. There are four Vedas: Sam, Rig, Yajur, and Atharva, and there are hundred and eight Upanishads, including the Isha Upanishad, Katha Upanishad, and Taittiriya Upanishad, as well as the Vedanta Sutra, Shrimad Bhagavatam, and Bhagavad Gita. these literatures are not meant for any particular class of men but for the totality of human society all societies can take advantage of vedic knowledge to perfect human life as pointed out before human life is not meant for sense gratification but for understanding god the universe and our own identity from vedic literatures we can understand that this material world is only a partial manifestation of the complete creation of god the larger portion of god's creation is found in the spiritual world of vaikunthas above and beyond this material nature there is a superior spiritual nature as shri krishna states in bhagavad gita bhumirapo nalo vayu khammano buddhire vacha अहंकार मे भिन्ना प्रकृतिरष्टधा अपरेय इतस्वनिया प्रकृति विधि मे परा जीवभूता महाबाहो येद धार्यते जगत earth water fire air ether mind intelligence and false ego all together this eight comprise my separated material energies besides this inferior nature o mighty arjuna there is a superior energy of mind which is all living entities who are struggling with material nature and sustaining the universe bhagavad gita 7th chapter verse number 4th and 5th there are many material universes clustered together and all these universes constitute the material creation beyond these clusters of countless material universes is the spiritual sky which is also mentioned in the bhagavad gita na tad bhasayate suryo na shashanko na pavakah yad gatva na nivartante tad dham paramam mama that abode of mind is not illumined by the sun or moon nor by electricity and anyone who reaches it never comes back to this material world bhagavad gita 15th chapter verse number 6 that superior nature which is beyond this material nature is eternal there is no history of its ever having begun it has neither beginning nor end paras tasmat tu bhavonyo अव्यक्तो व्यक्तात्सनातन यु भूतेषु नश्यत्सु न विनश्यति अव्यक्तोक्षर इत्युक्ता तमाहु परमां गति यम प्राप्य न निवर्तन्ते तद्धाम परमं मम 
there is another eternal nature which is transcendental to this manifested and non manifested matter it is supreme and is never annihilated when all in this world is annihilated that part remains as it is that supreme status is called unmanifested and infallible and is the highest destination going there one never returns from that my supreme abode bhagavad gita 8th chapter verse number 20 and 21st the vedic religion or varnashrama dharma is also called eternal because no one can trace out its beginning the christian religion has a history of 2000 years and the mohammedan religion has a history of 1300 years but if we try to trace out the origins of vedic religion we will not be able to find the beginning varnashrama dharma is accepted as the eternal religion of the living entity we often say that god created this material world and this means that god existed before the world since the lord was existing before this material manifestation he is not subjected to this creation if he were subjected to the laws of material world how could he have created it that the lord is simultaneously identical with his creation and yet exists in his completeness apart from it is stated in bhagavad gita मैया ततमिदम सर्वम जगद्दव्यक्तमूर्तिना मत्स्थानी सर्वभूतानी न चाहम तेवस्थित न च मत्स्था भूतानी पश्य मे योगमश्वर भूतभृण च भूतस्थ मत्मा भूत भाव इन मै ट्रांसेंडेंटल फॉर्म आय पर्वेड ऑल दिस क्रिएशन ऑल थिंग्स आर रेस्टिंग इन मी बट आई एम नॉट इन देम again everything that is created does not rest on me behold my mystic opulence although i am the maintainer of all living entities and although i am everywhere still myself is the very source of creation bhagavad gita 9th chapter verse 4th and 5th actually we are all spirit souls and are intended to associate with god in the spiritual sky where there are innumerable spiritual planets and innumerable spiritual living entities However those who are not fit to live in that spiritual world are sent to this material world this very idea is expressed by milton in paradise lost all the spirit soul we have voluntarily accepted this material body and by accepting it have also accepted the threefold miseries of material nature exactly when we accepted it and how we accepted it cannot be traced out no one can trace out the history of when the conditioned soul first began accepting this material bodies at present darwin's theory of the evolution of organic matter is very prominent in institutions of higher learning but there is information given in the padma purana and other authoritative scriptures of the living entities spiritual evolution from one bodily form to another This Purana informs us that there are 84 lakh forms of living entities 9 lakh of which live within water there are 20 lakh species amongst plants and vegetables alone at present everyone is giving stress to darwin's theory but in vedic literature there is immense information about the different species darwin expresses the opinion that the species are evolving from lower forms of life but this is not the whole truth the soul may progress from lower forms to higher forms but in the beginning of creation all species were created by shri krishna as indicated in bhagavad gita sarva bhutani kaunteya prakritim yanti mamikam kalpakshaye punastani kalpadau visrajamyaham prakritim swam avashtabhya visrajami punah punah भूतग्रामम इमं कृष्णम अवशम प्रकृतेर्वशात ओ सन ऑफ कुंती एट द एंड ऑफ द मिलेनियम एवरी मटेरियल मैनिफेस्टेशन एंटर्स अन टू माय नेचर एंड एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ अनदर मिलेनियम बाय माय पोटेंसी आई अगेन क्रिएट द होल कॉस्मिक ऑर्डर इज अंडर मी बाय माय विल इट इज मैनिफेस्टेड अगेन एंड अगेन एंड बाय माय विल इट इज एनहाइलेटेड एट द एंड Bhagavad Gita 9th chapter verse number 7 and 8 All of these living entities are subjected to the threefold miseries including those miseries pertaining to the body and mind animals cannot understand that they are suffering but human beings can one who does not know that he is suffering 
is in animal consciousness animals may be standing behind a fence to be slaughtered but they do not understand this as human beings we should be cognizant that we are suffering the pains of birth old age disease and death and should be inquisitive to know how to avoid these miseries we have been suffering from the beginning of our birth when as a baby we were tightly placed for 9 months in the womb of a mother after birth suffering continues although a mother may take much care of her child the baby still cries why because he is suffering either a bug is biting or there is a pain in the stomach or some other malady whatever the case the suffering goes on the child also suffers when he is forced to go to school when he does not want to the child do not want to study but the teacher gives him tasks anyway if we carefully analyze our lives we will find that they are full of suffering generally speaking conditioned souls are not very intelligent and therefore they go on suffering without ever inquiring why we should understand however that this suffering is there and if there is a remedy we must take advantage of it the great sage rishab dev instructed his sons in this way my dear boys in this life you have acquired these beautiful bodies now you should know that they are not meant for sense gratification like the bodies of hogs and dogs but for spiritual realization essentially what rishab dev is saying is that a life of sense gratification is meant for stool eaters like hogs and now that we have a higher form of life we should not try to imitate the lower forms recently we were surprised to see while walking in central park in new york city that a group of young american boys and girls were engaged in worshiping hogs while we were chanting hare krishna these groups of youngsters were chanting hog 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 they were actually parading with hogs in central park and bowing down before them and worshiping them they actually wanted one hog to become president and they wanted the hogs to lead them this has gone to such lengths that at one b in in seattle there was a demonstration with hogs in which the boys and girls undressed themselves and got in the mud and played with the hogs and in this way they were associating with the hogs and pigs which they worshiped all this is going on in a country where the young people have good looking bodies a great deal of money and so many other advantages over the young people of other nations the result of gaining all these advantages is that they have simply taken to hog worship such hog worship was anticipated long long ago and was described in shrimad bhagavatam which was compiled at least 5000 years ago the point is that a beautiful situation in life should be utilized for a beautiful end not for degraded forms of worship in the vedic histories we find that there were many many exalted emperors and kings who practiced austerities and penances Dhruva Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj and Yudhishthir Maharaj were all great kings and were most opulent but at the same time they were great sages thus they set the example for those who have acquired this good opportunity of a beautiful human form of life with all the facilities for economic development and good living this opportunity should be used to attain an even better life and this can be actualized by practice of penance at present we are existing in this material bodies but if we take to the process of krishna consciousness our consciousness will be purified although american and european the young students who are voluntarily practicing krishna consciousness are very pleased to practice it the process is not troublesome but pleasing now they are realizing that purified existence constitutes the difference between animal life and human life If we purify our existence simply by following the basic regulations of Krishna consciousness which involve abstaining from illicit sexual connection meat eating intoxication and gambling we will gradually rise to attain our spiritual existence which is completely pure the sage rishab dev told his sons that once they purified their existence they would have unlimited happiness 
we are all intended to attain peace and happiness but whatever peace and happiness we find in this material world is limited if we but purify our existence and attain spiritual existence we will experience unlimited peace and happiness the spiritual world is not dry or abstract as pointed out before there is variegatedness there a part of the spiritual pleasure experienced in the vaikunthas is the pleasure of dancing there are also young girls and young boys there indeed there is no such thing as old age or disease or death or the pains of birth if we want to participate in the unlimited happiness knowledge and eternal life which constitute our actual heritage in the spiritual world we should not waste this life by working hard for sense gratification and worshiping hogs we should accept a life devoted to the cultivation of krishna consciousness and then we will get unlimited happiness and unlimited pleasure this is the sum and substance of the krishna consciousness movement hare krishna first chapter of elevation to krishna consciousness is wrapped up if you found the video to be helpful please share it with your friends and family and give it a thumbs up comment and let us know which points you felt were useful don't forget to subscribe our channel we will be back with second chapter hard struggle for happiness soon till then chant hare krishna and be happy जय जय प्रभु 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 जय जय प्रभु ओ जय जय प्रभु 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 जय प्रभु